Good day class! Welcome back sa ating virtual classroom at ngayong araw ay pag-uusapan natin ang ating lesson number 1 sa ating subject na CSS. Kaya kung handa na kayo, let's go! Bago natin umpisahan ng lesson number 1, make sure na hawak nyo ngayon ang inyong copy ng module. Ito man ay nasa hard copy or printed copy or di kaya naman ay soft copy sa inyong cellphone, laptop, desktop computer or ano pa mang uh, devices na gamit nyo ngayon. Okay, so let's start the lesson sa ating module number 1, ang Main topic natin is computer and its peripherals. Okay, so overview. This module was designed and written with you in mind. It is here to help you develop knowledge, skills, and attitudes in the performance of computer system servicing 9 task. The scope of this module permits it to be used in many different learning situations. So, uh... Ang module na hawak nyo ngayon ay designed para maturuan kayo ng mga skill na kailangan nyo para magawa ang performance task na bibigay ko as teacher ng CSS sa inyo in the future. So, umbisahan natin. Alright, so dito muna tayo sa objectives. After going through this module, you should be able to identify and explain computer and its peripherals. So, meron tayong apat na objective na after ng buong lesson nito ng module 1 ay dapat magawa nyo ito. So, number 1, define computer and its parts. 2, describe the types and classification of the computer. 3, classify the different forms of personal computers. 4, distinguish the computer peripherals and devices. Alright, so let's start. What's in? Computer is one of the brilliant inventions of mankind. Being familiar with the types and parts of the computers are not enough. When computers arrived, we have been able to speed up our daily work, carry out critical transactions, and achieve accuracy and precision in work. Computers are classified under various types. So let us look the different classification and types of computers. So, totoo naman yan, di ba? So, nung na-develop itong computer na to, naging mas mabilis ang trabaho ng tao. At ganyan din, kasunod ng computer, na-develop naman ng internet. So, lahat ng information na kailangan natin, isang click na lang, may kita na natin. Kaya, isa ito sa pinaka milestone or malaki ang naidulot na pagbabago sa buhay ng mga tao nung na-develop itong computer and the internet as well. Okay, another definition of computer. A computer is an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory that can accept data or input, process the data according to specified rules, produce information or output, and store the information for future use. Any kind of computers consists of hardware and software. So, uh, yan, basic, in, uh, basic definition ng computer, isa itong device nga or machine, sinasabi nila, it's a machine that converts data or process data and then give the data back to the user na ito na ngayon yung information. At, uh, toko yun na dalawa, lang, dalawa ang, ang bumubuo sa computer. Dalawang bagay ang bumubuo sa kabuuan ng computer. Una ay ang hardware and then the software. So, makikita nyo sa screen ang electronic data processing o ang isang pinasimpleng uh, flowchart ng electronic data processing o kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob ng computer. So, mag-uumpisa yan sa data or input and then dadaan ang mga data na inilagay sa process and uh, during process, uh, dito nangyayari yung calculation, conversion of data para maging output. So, ibig sabihin, itong output na to, ito na yung mga bagay na binibigay sa atin ng computer. Uh, Iba-ibang output. Pwedeng image, sound, and uh, 
videos and others. And during process, meron kayong uh, option na i-save ang inyong gawa or ginagawa for future use. O yung process na ginagawa na sa data, pwede niyang i-save muna yan. And then, in the future, ay uh, itutuloy ang pagproseso at mapupunta ngayon siya sa output. Okay? Ang computer ay isang machine. So, ito ay isang electronic machine or device. Kung ang i-input mo dito ay uh, yung language na sinasalita natin or yung ginagamit natin talaga, ay hindi niya may intindihan yan kasi nga machine nga siya. Kaya ano yung data na may intindihan niya? So, ito ngayon yung consist of two numbers, yung 1 and 0. So, ang tawag nila dito, binary. So, ito yung binary, ito yung input na inilalagay sa computer para i-process. And then, this binary ay ipoproseso, i-convert, i-calculate para makabuo ng information ngayon na maiintindihan na natin. So, combinations of 1 and 0 ng binary, ipaprocess ito. Kapag lumabas na yung information, ito na ngayon yung maiintindihan natin. And during process, uh, pwede mong isave nga yung ginagawa nitong proseso, mababalikan mo siya. Okay? And dito rin sa storage, you have the option to delete permanently itong pinaprosesong mga data. Lesson 1, different types of computers. So dito may kita nyo yung tatlong uh, major uh, types of computers. So dun tayo sa una. Analog computers. Analog computers is a form of computer that uses continuously form of physical quantities and it can perform calculations with the help of measures. These computers mo mostly used in the hospitals, aircrafts, and so on. So, analog computers. Pag sinabing analog, it used physical quantities na nami-measure natin. Ano ba itong mga physical quantity na nami-measure natin? Ang example niyan, speed. Speed, bilis. Pangalawa, uh, temperature, uh, init or lamig. And uh, pangatlong example is yung bigat, weight. Uh, ito yung mga physical quantities na nami-measure, hindi ba? So, example ng isang analog uh, device na nagme-measure ng bilis, eh, yung speedometer sa sasakyan. So, merong physical na quantity dito, di ba? Yung bilis. At nakikita nyo, kapag nakikita nyo na bumibilis na yung sa speedometer, ano nangyayari, di ba? Umaangat yung, ano niya, yung pinaka-needle niya, yung kamay niya dun sa analog. So, isa yun sa mga, ano, sa uh, analog devices. Ganyan din sa analog computers, no? So, iba-ibang mga analog uh, signals or quantities ang minimeasure nito. Kaya, ginagamit siya yan, sa hospital to measure the temperature. Yan, sa aircraft, yung speed nga. Tatandaan nyo lang dito yung physical quantities. Kaya siya tinawag na analog. Next, digital computers. So, ang digital computer, it uses uh, ano na, digital signals na. So, digital computers are the most common computers that we are using every day that perform calculations and logic operations. So, dahil wala tong sinusukat na physical quantities, all digital. Kung ano yung i-input mo sa kanya in digital form, yun, yun yung ipaprocess niya. Kasi dun sa analog, ang pinaprocess niyang information is from the physical quantities. Okay, hybrid computers naman. Hybrid are computers with combined features of both digital and analog type. This type of computer operates by counting as well as by measuring. So, yan. Hybrid, pinagsamang analog at digital. So, itong computer na to, uh, nagpa-process siya ng digital information. So, yun yung main na pinaprocess niya, digital data. As well as, meron din siyang peripheral na nagme-measure din ng physical quantities, kagaya ng temperature. So, may mga modern computers pa rin ngayon na meron siyang feature na nami-measure niya yung temperature ng paligid niya. So, kaya siya tinawag na hybrid kasi dalawa yung mini-measure niya, physical at yung digital na data. Okay, so now we move on to the classification of computers. Number one, mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are multi-user, multi-programming, and high-performance computers. They operate at a very high speed. 
have a very large storage capacity and can handle the workload of many users. It is also used in centralized databases and used in organizations like banks or companies. So, itong mainframes is not a typical computer na nakikita natin ngayon na merong system unit, keyboard, mouse, and then monitor. So, itong mga mainframe na to, malalaking computer to. And some of these computers ay uh, kasing laki ng mga cabinet. Kung meron kayong mga malalaking cabinet sa bahay, ganun yung kung itsura niya. Even, ang mainframe computers ay pwedeng pagsamasamahin ito. Depende kung saan siya gagamitin. Ginagamit siya sa uh, malalaking kumpanya. Kasi lahat ng information ng uh, malaking kumpanya na yun, eh dito napupunta. And most mainframe computers ay gumagana 24-7. Ibig sabihin, Simula nung binuksan tong mga mainframe na to, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa sila pinapatay. Kaya, ito ay minimaintain lagi, no? And it is stored in a well-ventilated room. Mostly, ang mga uh, pinaglalagyan nito ng mga kwarto ay merong temperature control. So, mainframe, sobrang bilis na computer na to. Ginagamit lang siya, depende sa kung gaano kadaming data ang ipaprocess niya. Next, mini computers. Mini computers are digital computers generally used in multi-user system. They have high processing speed and high storage capacity that micro -com computer and mini computers. They are used for real-time application in industries, research, centers, etc. So, kagaya na makikita niyo sa pictures, yun yung mga mini computer that process specific task. Ginagamit lang siya for specific purposes uh, kung saan siya naka-program. So, ito ay hindi general computer. Pag sinabing general computer o yung computer na ginagamit natin ngayon, pwede mong installan ng apps na gusto mong gamitin. Ito namang, mini, itong mini computers, meron lang silang specific task na naka-program sa kanila na ginagamit ng research centers and industries. Next, servers. They are computers designed to provide services to client machines in a computer network. They have larger storage capacities and powerful processors. Usually, they are very large in size as they have large processors and many hard drives. They are designed to be fail-safe and resistant to crash. So, itong mga servers na to, isa rin siya sa isang not a typical computer dahil ang mga server ang nakakonect dito ay iba pang mga computer. So, kung meron kang server, ito yung pinaka-main system mo na i-connect mo ngayon yung mga client computers. Client ang tawag dun sa mga iba pang computer na nakakonect sa kanya. So, ang mga server, it has a big capacity ng storage para yung mga uh, iba pang computer, dito na mapupunta lahat ng file na isi-save nila para mas secure kung masira man yung computer na nakakonect dito, hindi maapektuhan yung file na na-save kasi dito na dumiretso sa server. So, ang server, it comes in different sizes din. Merong server na kasing lalaki nga ng mainframe. Meron din naman na server na kasing laki lang ng typical na computer. Pero yung mga ginamit sa kanya na hardware device is mas mataas kumpara dun sa ibang mga computer. So, yan. Siguro, familiar kayo, no? Sa computer shop, meron kayong tinatawag na server. Kasi nga, yung server na yun, nakokontrol niya lahat ng computer dun sa computer shop. So, that's one of the example of servers. Next. Yan. Supercomputers. They are the fastest and the most expensive machines. Some of the faster computers can perform trillions of calculations per second such as weather forecasting, climate research, and aircraft design. So, may kita nyo dyan sa picture, isa lang yan sa mga design ng supercomputer. At yun nga, itong supercomputer na to, meron silang mga specific na task. Hindi siya general computer na pwede mong gamitin. Sa definition, it can perform trillions of calculations per second. So, napakabilis nito. Napakabilis nitong supercomputers na to. Next, microcomputers. A computer with a microprocessor and its central processing unit, it is known as micro 
computer. They do not occupy space as much as mainframes do. Ang tawag sa personal computer or desktop computers nyo sa bahay, ang technical na tawag dyan ay micro, micro computer. Bakit micro computer? Kasi nga, ang ginagamit na pinaka central processing unit niya ay microprocessor. So, yan. So, ito na yung mga typical na ginagamit natin sa bahay ngayon. Personal computers, we have number one, desktop. So, a desktop is the most common type of microcomputer. It is stand-alone machine that can be placed on the desk. Kaya siya desktop kasi nga, it can be placed on a table or on the desk. So, meron siyang mga connected parts. So, meron tayong system unit, may monitor, may keyboard, and then may mouse. So, itong mga susunod na slide, it is a uh, personal computers. Ibig sabihin, uh, kaya siya tinawag na personal computer for personal use. So, yung personal data mo or personal file, dito mo yan nilalagay sa mga personal computers natin. Number two, similar in operation to desktops, laptop computers are miniature and optimized for mobile use. Laptops runs on a single battery on a, on, or an external adapter that charges the computer batteries. So, usual yan at meron kayo yan, nakikita nyo yan, laptop. Basically, pwede mo siyang ipatong sa, sa lap mo. Pag nakaupo ka, papatong mo siya sa lap. Kaya siya laptop kasi nga, nadadala mo siya kahit saan. So, hindi mo kailangan ng table para gamitin tong uh, laptop na to. Pero ang power niya, parang ano lang rin. Parang uh, desktop computers lang rin. Okay? Next, netbooks. So, they fall in the category of laptops but are inexpensive and relatively smaller in size. They had a smaller feature set and lesser capacities in comparison to regular laptops at the time they came into the market. So, kaya siya tinawag na netbook, halos konti lang yung uh, na, nagagawa mo sa kanya. Hindi mo siya pwedeng downloadan ng maraming application. Uh, usually, ginagamit lang siya to surf in the internet, kaya siya tinawag na netbook kasi nga, hindi mo siya pwedeng installan ng maraming uh, application or else, babagal siya ng sobra at hindi mo na siya magagamit. So, smaller in size, maliit, kesa sa laptop, at mas maliit din yung memory niya kumpara sa malalaking laptop or sa regular laptop natin. Next, Personal Digital Assistance or PDAs. It is a handheld computer and popularly known as a palm top. Palm top kasi nga, napatong lang sa kamay mo. So, nabibitmit mo siya. Para siyang cellphone actually. It has touchscreen and a memory card for storage data. PDAs can also be used as portable audio players, web browsers, and smartphones. Most of them can access, can access the internet by means of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi communication. So, PDA, computer pa rin kasi yung mga unang lumabas na PDA, ang, nung wala pang Android, do, nung hindi pa masyadong uso yung Android, eh... Ang laman talaga nito or ang operating system nito Windows. So yung mga Windows phone noon, ito 'yon, yung mga PDA. So makikita nyo, makita mo may mga desktop din siya, may mga folders, may mga documents, kagaya ng typical computer. Yun nga lang, wala siyang keyboard, mouse, nadadala mo siya na parang cellphone. Okay? So personal digital assistant. Next, tablet computers. Tablets are mobile computers that are very handy to use. They use the touchscreen technology. Tablets come with an on-screen keyboard or use a stylus or digital pen. Apple's iPad redefined the class of tablet computers. So, yan. So, yung may kita nyo, um, computer pa rin, pero malaki yung screen and then touchscreen.